Well, howdy. If I were to tell you, you could live on this lake here, in the middle of nowhere, Idaho, would you do it? <laughs> well, you might not, because you probably can't afford it. But a lot of other people can, and they would. I mean, they're doing it right now. In case you didn't know, Idaho is booming, pal. They haven't seen this much attention since the old gold and silver mining days. Back when men were men, and so were the women. For the next two stops on this road trip, we're going to check out the western side of Idaho to see what the fuss is all about up here. If you haven't heard, every single retiree on the west coast has thought about moving here. Which is all new. Because when I was a kid, growing up in California, I would have never thought about moving to Idaho. No way. Well, time's changed. We're in Coeur d'Alene. It's one of the hottest housing markets in the country. Or was. We'll get to that later. But it's the perfect example of how politics and demographics are changing in America. You might look around here and say, wow, well, wow, this all looks wonderful. It is if you're new to town, but if you're from here, this is a disaster. Idaho people are not very happy about what this place has become. Many of them are thinking about leaving. You know, sometimes you come to a place on vacation and you're like, you know what? I think I could live here. And then after 10 whiskey and Cokes, you're like, sell the house. We're doing this. Happens a lot in this part of the country now. And it's happening a lot right where I'm standing. Summertime in Coeur d'Alene can really make you second guess your future. Where in the Idaho are we, anyways? The Panhandle. Coeur d'Alene's practically in Washington, and it's sort of the last stop before you get up to no man's land, hardcore, right-wing, conspiracy theory, Prepperville, all the way up here on your way to Canada. You probably wouldn't fit in up there. Coeur was founded in 1878 because of the buku amounts of gold and silver found in the nearby hillsides. Then it grew even more when logging became a big deal. But it didn't really start to take off here until the tourism industry picked up in the 1990s. And lately? Well, I'd say based on everything I've heard from the locals, things here are a real racket now. Now here comes the political part. So cover your ears if you're over that crap. If you were to ask some random person who's seriously thinking about leaving Southern California, there's a pretty good chance Idaho has crossed their radar. I mean, look at the place. We're surrounded by lakes and mountains and all. Coeur d'Alene has good values. Crime's low. There's clean air, and clean water. You have a beautiful lake and a river and a cheap college. Everything California doesn't have. The state of Idaho has always had an independent sensibility about the place. Conservative, but
but more libertarian than anything else. A no seatbelt wearing, self sufficient crowd left over from the old Western expansion pioneer days. And they love their guns here. Now, all over the Mountain West, you hear about liberals moving in and changing the laws and changing the way of life. But here in Idaho, Seems like the people coming in want to keep the place the same. I know. Shocker, right? The theory is that most of the people that are coming up here have to be pretty hardcore. They're not the same type of Cali refugees that wind up in Vegas or Phoenix. You come up here and you must be serious. You know what I mean? Like, dear new neighbors... We're fleeing the liberal disaster of my former home, and I'm coming up here in peace. Please allow me to buy your most expensive homes and then teach me your ways. They're just looking for a better life in a free state. I talked to folks in town who said that the new people coming into Coeur d'Alene, they just want to leave the politics out of things. And thank God for that, right? Now, people around here aren't shocked by what's happening. They all knew that Coeur d'Alene would get discovered one day, but it's just happened so fast. There's 55,000 people in Coeur d'Alene now, but 20,000 of them have come in the last 20 years alone. That's a lot. Look at all these people, people. Jeez. Didn't used to be like this in Coeur d'Alene. Used to have this beach to ourselves. Now it's all these tourists and rich out-of-towners coming in and ruining everything, damn it. When I was here, it was during the middle of the week at the height of the summer tourism season. And I talked to people in town and I was surprised to hear, they were like, this is actually slow. Like, this is the slowest summer that we've had in 15 years. But no matter where you go here, you can see that this small, peaceful lakeside town has been turned into a full-blown resort. It is busy. how it is down here in the summertime. Can't even walk across the street. Jeez. You see elegant and gaudy and lavish all over the place. And you have to remind yourself, you're in Idaho. I mean, look at this. A gold Tesla at the pit in Idaho? That ain't the most unmodest thing you ever did see. People who drive Teslas are thirsty as it is, but damn... So maybe they don't have to worry about the politics changing too much up here. But the housing market sure is in deep shit. I can tell you that. The housing market up here doubled in the last three years. And it was one of the hottest housing markets in the country. And then there was a bubble. And now everything's down 10%. But it's still up way higher than it was just five years ago. It's the same thing we're seeing all over in Colorado and Montana. People leaving their overpriced metro areas with a big chunk of cash. And then they come in here and they plunk down 800 grand on something twice as big as where they left. Of course, if you already own a home, home gains are good. But a lot of people up here are worried. 
How are their kids going to be able to afford a house here one day? And how can the locals keep up with the sky-high rent prices? Not right now, they can't. Not on Coeur d'Alene wages, they can't. There's a lot of 20-year-olds living at home up here. You know where we've been driving around would be considered the middle class part of Coeur d'Alene. These homes are probably in the five fifty to $600,000 range. At least when I was here. But they're probably going to be a lot higher when you watch this. And everywhere you go in Coeur d'Alene, you see construction. Farmers are more than willing to cooperate. Somebody waves a big paycheck in front of them, and they're like, okay, you can have it. There you go. More development. More people. More taxes. This is a total Coeur d'Alene thing. Check out this new shopping plaza area. And then there's all these new condos everywhere. And these condos. And these condos. This is the new Idaho, everyone. And over here on the Coeur d'Alene Lake Shore, there's some of the nicest homes in the area. They sure are fancy, I tell ya. I think a lot of these are second homes for folks with a lot of scratch. These places are all in the many millions of dollars. Transplants come up here with stars in their eyes and they're like, by golly, this place is paradise. But if you're from here and you're a regular earner, you're getting pushed out at the expense of these rich newcomers. Blue collar families are literally leaving. The crisis up here is a huge rich versus poor gap. They always check out the real estate boards to get a feel for what they're asking for the fancy homes in town. 486 for this nice looking teeny home with 750 feet. Move in ready though. Look at this. This is probably on the lake over the area we flew over earlier. Nine million smackers. Here's some more of those super duper fancy homes we saw in the intro. Most of these people are successful beyond which you and I will ever know. I mean, the average price here is use your imagination. And this has also become a trendy place for the LA crowd. Justin Bieber, the Kardashians, George Clooney, football player, John Elway. They call this North Hollywood because of all the celebrities that have second homes up here. And they get in their boat and they'll come over to downtown or they'll just take a plane and then they create a little scene when they arrive. And the locals do not like them. I heard Harrison Ford even punched some local in town. Don't want to get punched by that guy. 
Of course, there's still kind of affordable parts of town. This is what would be considered the cheap part of town. You know, the Coeur d'Alene hoods. <laughs> but it is not really cheap, nor is it a hood. Stuff in this part of town is close to $400,000 these days. A lot for not a lot, huh, everyone? Just regular folks holding on to their land. Knowing it's going to keep going up, up, up. But for the people renting in this part of town, they're out of luck. Rents doubled in Coeur d'Alene the last five years. That sucks. In case you're wondering, the schools in Coeur d'Alene aren't very great. But Idaho's school system is just about average anyway. This is the cheapest home in town when I was there. 295k for a 700 square foot home. Damn. But no matter what part of Idaho you're in, it's still way better than California. And there's still some old Idaho left here, which is good to see. Coeur d'Alene's population is 93% white and somewhat conservative. But compared to other parts of northern Idaho, they're probably considered leftist loonies. Idaho's not as redneck as it was back in the day when every truck had a gun rack. And there's still some underlying racism and paranoia about the government here. But that's Idaho for you. No matter how many new people come up here, you can't get that out of their blood. I bet all the newcomers pass this awesome classic truck and think, Ew, that's ugly. Is it even electric? No, thank God. And this person still knows what old Idaho is all about, huh? So the vibe downtown is great. People are friendly. Everyone's nice for the most part. Lots of down-to-earth, hard-working people. And lots of wide-eyed tourists, just like me. There's some sort of job scene here. Just a little bit for everyone. A lot of people here work in tourism. Some people work from home. Some people are retired. And some people drive into Spokane, Washington for work. That sucks. A crane right here. No. All the construction. Duh. Now, I think this looks really nice. But locals say, downtown's getting a little seedy. But I don't think Idaho really knows what seedy is. I've seen seedy. This is not that. It's just really clean down here. There's a lot of energy, a lot to do. You can walk around and not have to worry about anything. I don't think there's any problems with break-ins. And no smash and grabs here. They would not put up with that. And you always hear that whenever there's a housing crisis in a community, Homelessness goes up. I didn't see a single bum or a panhandler here. I think they just run them out of town. You kind of have to, or they'll just grow like mold. I think the only problem the police have is with DUIs. And I hear they crack down on that big time. Somebody told me that there's an officer in town whose only job is to pull people over for drinking and driving. Good for them. Idaho people don't put up with bums. There's no handouts up here. <laughs> Nappy, you grew a mustache. You look like Magnum P.I. When'd you do that? This morning. I think he looks handsome. 
Here's a better look at that resort. It's an 18 story hotel that opened up in 1986. It's right along the lake and it is fancy people. This is where all the elite people make their presence known. The place to be seen, as they say. So fancy Coeur d'Alene. Yeah. And here's where all the wealthy folks in town park their boats. I think I read that these slips are going for 200 grand. Jeez, must be nice. Look at all these fancy boats. It's a lot of money out here, I'll tell you. A lot. It's super nice out here though, watching the sunset. I guess you get what you pay for. So we went to three of the lakeside beaches in town. The first beach we went to is Tubbs Beach. It's on a hillside across the lake from downtown. There were a lot of people here, and most of them looked to be from out of town. I can see why locals would complain about all the crowds. There's just a lot of people that come here, and there's nothing they can do about it. I even saw poop floating in the water. Down the road is Sanders Beach, which really isn't a beach. I mean, technically it is, but it's just a spit of sand, some neighborhood. If you want a kind of real beach, there's one close to downtown where people hang out. And this park, if this was in California, it would be ruined with bummery. I mean ruined. No BS. It's a breath of fresh air up here in the mountains. And look, you don't have to lock your shit up. People can just throw their stuff down and hop in the lake and not have to worry about it getting sold for crack. How America used to be. How America should be. But if you want a really nice beach without people on it, well then you better buy a home along the lake or make some friends with somebody who has one. <laughs> While well, out and about in Coeur d'Alene, I did a lot. Hello, you know me. A night on the town's pretty lively. There's a lot of youthful energy after hours. When the old timers go to bed and the rich people have had their fill, the cool people come out. This is the Moose Lounge, home of the Moose Mug. It sounds and feels just like any other kind of divey place I've been to out west. <laughs> Hudson's Hamburgers is a must. When you're in town, you have to come here. Usually you have to stand in line because there's really not a lot of places to sit down. It's one of those little classic joints with really basic food that's hard to mess up. Kind of plain, but it's damn good. Man, there is nothing more Coeur d'Alene 
than a Hudson's hamburger out on the beach in the summertime, folks. Huckleberries, they're a huge deal in Idaho. Gotta have that here. There's a cool pubby place called Unchained where you can sit on a real kind of stool bike thing and work off your beer and your burger. It was here that I first discovered Kokani. I don't like craft beer. It smells like mold and tastes like dirt. But Kokani, that's my kind of beer. And I never heard of it before. I had Kokani's a lot when I was here. This is the Iron Horse restaurant in town. Another totally Idaho place. It's huge. And it looks like it gets rowdy. Don't talk about woke in here, mister. And if that ain't the biggest cell phone belt clip I've ever seen. Huh, everyone? So we're at the Iron Horse. And this guy comes by in a full-blown suit of armor. Like we were in medieval Europe or something. And it was like 98 degrees that day. Did you make this? I didn't, no, I got it off uh, eBay actually. You bought it on eBay, is this the first time you've worn it? No. <laughs> you wear this a lot? No, just every couple months. Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it's great because uh, I'm on mile 15 probably right now and yeah, I'm getting pretty tired. It's been a what, good day. Why don't you get some water? I have been, but I'm getting pretty thirsty. You want to come in and get some water? Uh, I'm almost back, but thank you though. All right. I'm on the final stretch and forcing my mission is almost accomplished and the journey is almost complete. Okay, good for you. Thank all you. right, man. I don't think the guy was all the way there. The first night, we ate at Dockside, the really fancy restaurant in the resort. You have to eat here if you want to be taken seriously. And the menus are digital. I've never seen that before. I guess I don't got enough rich in my blood. It's raining now. And then briefly during dinner, it actually rained. This was only the second and the last time we got rained on on the entire trip in 32 days. And both showers were like five minutes long. And then we got this. Too much Idaho. Our second night, we had a place called Sweet Lou's. Wah, wah, wah. The place has a wonderful patio that overlooks the lake. It has a neat atmosphere, but the food's terrible. The mashed potatoes were garbage, and this was my driver's plate of wings, if you can call those wings. Worst wings we've ever had. I thought I'd learned my lesson about ordering chicken in the Mountain West. Stick to beef, people. That's what they do best up here. But this was neat, the boardwalk bar. We got there before last call and had one more drink right on the water to wash away the taste of those wings. And then a wonderful midsummer walk on the Lake Coeur d'Alene boardwalk. Dang. I could do this more regularly. Where we stayed when we were here was a cool place at the end of town. Most of the hotels were expensive, but we got exactly what we wanted at the Lake Coeur d'Alene Inn. It's kind of a beachy, chill kind of place. Thanks, Steve and Jerry. Oh yeah, and a quick update on this. So this was day 25, and you can see how the car bug palette looks at this point from just thousands and thousands of miles out here, driving through the mountains and the deserts and the prairies. Pretty neat looking, huh? I've seen birds actually land on the grill when I'm parked and peck out all of the 
traits that have embedded themselves. I feel kind of bad about it. You could call me a bug mass murderer, I guess. These shoes have walked across five states now. And look at my shoes. Good Lord. And I still had one more week. I don't think my shoes are going to make it. But anyway, after 27 or 26 days, this is what everything's starting to look like here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. With five days to go, maybe six, I lost count. best part of the trip was that plane ride. This is Captain Shane. He runs flights on this lake on the regular. Super cool guy. He came up here from San Diego. He's been running seaplane rides up here for two seasons now. Tell me about what we're doing here. Yeah, today we're going to be going on a uh a seaplane ride around Coeur d'Alene. So uh, we're gonna get in a Beach 18, it's a 1954 Beach 18, and we're gonna fly the whole uh, Coeur d'Alene Lake. Show you guys what it's like to fly on a uh, seaplane as well as uh, what Coeur d'Alene has to offer from the air. Shane took me and my driver up for about an hour over the lake, and we got to see all the fancy homes and the local hillsides. Awesome time. I highly recommend it if you come up here. And Shane let me sit right up front, right next to him. Totally trusted me. I had all the controls within my reach. I asked him about that, and he was like, ah, I'm not worried about it. Man, I love my job sometimes. Back in the 1990s, when the California people started to trickle in up here, the Idaho kids were like, Ooh, these California people are so cool with their Cali accents and cool haircuts. Maybe one day, I'll move to California. <laughs> now the kids here are being raised to be weary of the new breed of Californians moving in. They always knew the place would blow up. This isn't a shocker. I mean, look at the place, and it sure ain't going back to the way it used to be. This old mining and lumber town's growing up right before our eyes. Coeur d'Alene still has a little bit of small town charm left in her, but little by little, people are getting their claws into the place. And a lot of people up here have their doubts, and they're cautious, despite what these newcomers say at the ballot box. And what I saw the next day was a big wake-up call for what these people might expect one day. I don't think it's the politics or the culture that they have to deal with. It's the sheer volume. Boise, Idaho is on fire. You were born and raised in Coeur d'Alene. Right. And uh, your family's been there for like 90 years? Yeah, yeah, about that. Okay. And there's fewer of you guys, long-timers left, I hear. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You, if I'm at the store and people say, if I say, yeah, my husband and I were born and raised here, they'll be like, wow, that's like the first time I've actually heard that. Like it's, it's actually pretty rare. So you reached out to me because I was coming to Coeur d'Alene and you were very helpful about telling me a little bit about the culture and what to look for and everything. Um, and one thing that you said when you emailed me was, um, you told me that Coeur d'Alene natives are getting pushed further and further into poverty because of all the wealthy people that are moving up there. Um, how how truly <clears throat> bad is that? Is is it up there? Um, I mean, North Idaho has always been a bit of a two tier environment. Like, um, I remember in the '90s, <clears throat> we would start to get these people from California 
mostly moving in and they were always kind of like the rich kids in school and you know they always had like the up and coming fashion and like in the 90s we were stuck in the 80s um so it's always been a bit of a like a structure because we're a resort town but um <clears throat> definitely I would say in the last like five years it's really kind of gotten magnified and as the home prices have gone skyrocketing the local people around here are just like truly suffering. So yeah, it's gotten worse. Yeah. Well, so what, what is bad? The home prices are going up. If you own a home, you're happy, but if you're renting, you're not. Right. If you've bought a home maybe five, six years ago, four or five years ago, you're probably doing okay. Um, if you, if you miss the mark, if you, if you weren't able to, um, lock in and buy a home before, you know, four years ago, you're, you're in deep, you know, you're, you're not gonna, you're going to be really stuck. Um, <clears throat> rentals, of course, you know, you're kind of at the mercy of your landlord. Uh, my husband, he knows people at his work that got, you know, a letter in the mail saying your, uh, you know, your renewal is coming up for your rental next month. And by the way, we're doubling it going from, 800 a month to 1600 or, you know, 900 to 1800 a month. And if you don't like it, you know, see you later. So it's, it's gotten, there's not a, a lot of um, like renter protections here in Idaho. That's my understanding. So yeah, we're just really at the mercy of um, whatever's happening. And I think a lot of people, are moving here and saying, Oh my gosh, this is paradise. Look what, you, what, look what you can get for a million bucks, which is true compared to where they're coming from. And they're just like, wow, this is like, this is amazing. And, and like, it's clean. And you know, there's not all these problems where we, where we came from um, and they can see their bang for their buck, but the local people are just getting totally slaughtered. And you go talk to like the, the clerk at Walmart, or, you know, the, the people working in the restaurants and they're getting killed. I mean, people are, people are losing their homes. They're having to move in with family. Um, I actually know of a couple of families personally who their, their adult children in their early 20s have actually moved across the country, Wisconsin, Arkansas. So families are being split up because the locals around here, if you, if you didn't buy three, four or five years ago, you're you're out of it so well i can see why people want to go there and and i wanted to ask your perspective because you know as a person that's never been to idaho before i when i got to Coeur d'Alene, i had been in the state for literally three days we get there and i'm like this place is amazing i can see why everybody wants to come here um yeah. but i don't have perspective on what Coeur d'Alene used to be before it became overpriced and overcrowded what was Coeur d'Alene like in the older days before everybody discovered it? Um, so like in the nineties, that's when I was growing up here. Um, <clears throat> it was a pretty like simple Idaho town. Um, you know, I was recently in the local Goodwill and I was, you know, the bathrooms are just like run down kind of like a bowling alley vibe. And, you know, just the store was kind of run down. I'm like, this was Coeur d'Alene in the nineties. Um, you know, you do have like the Coeur d'Alene has always had the resort. So there's always been a tourism industry, but it was very much you have some people that are well off, you know, people that have the, the marinas and the boats and things like that. I think everyone around here growing up in the 90s, if you weren't a rich kid, you had a friend that was a rich kid who had a boat, you know? So, um, but it was a lot of like, just kind of, you know, bowling alleys and just kind of go into the lake on the weekends. Um, like I said, we were typically, you know, 10 to 15 years behind the fashion trends before like the internet and all of that and, uh, you know, worldwide shipping. So yeah, it was just kind of a simple, um, simple way of life. Like you go to the county fairs and, you know, even the people in Coeur d'Alene weren't necessarily like the deep rednecks, but they definitely had them, you know, um, the school that I went to, we had the really rich kids. And then we had like the total rednecks that are out, you know, doing the bonfires on the weekend and like tearing it up with their big trucks in the mud. So, um, yeah, Coeur d'Alene has always had a bit of that 
um, structure, but now it's just gotten to where it's just totally, it's uh, really difficult for the average people who have been here for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you could look one on one hand, you could look at Coeur d'Alene and say, um, oh my God, it's amazing. It's so fixed up and beautiful. And it's, or you could look at it and say, the place is ruined. It's not the same as it used to be. Um, how do you feel about Coeur d'Alene now? I, I still have hope for it. I totally think that, you know, the people moving here are more minded of like, we want to be, we want to be in Idaho. You know, it used to be, you know, back in the nineties, like the Californians would be like, ah, oh, you know, we're changing these people's ways. I do feel like the people that are coming here want to assimilate to Idaho. Maybe they don't even really know what that means. Um, I do think that people who move here should maybe go like, um, there's a place in Post Falls called State, State Line Speedway. And I think that everyone that moves here should go to State Line Speedway in the summer and like drink all the cheap beer and cheap hot dogs, you know, wear like your, uh, your, your tankless, you know, your <laughs> sleeveless tank top and get the Idaho experience because that's kind of the culture you're going into. And of course we have like the wealthier areas, um, you know, mountain biking and skiing and things like that. <clears throat> I, I think that, I don't know, I'm not going to lose hope. I feel like um, if people can kind of get into the Idaho mode um, and the way that we kind of live life up here. And I think that there's enough like independent minded people that they're, they are willing to like, you know, really put their necks out there and be like, you guys better not mess up our state, you know? Um, yeah, I think I, I'm hopeful. I'm, what I'm hoping is that people who come in here bring their industry and their jobs. That's what we need the most. Um, we have a lot of young people who are like, what are we going to do? You know, the, the, the rentals are so expensive. The houses, a lot of the young adults are like, there's no way we're ever going to buy a house here. What are we going to do? How are we going to start a family someday? So we need people who are coming into this area to bring their industry, bring their jobs, bring their uh, love of education and higher things. Um, uh, I, I didn't verify this, but I heard recently that my kids' school had 400 less students this year, which was shocking because of the growth in the area. But someone had said it's because the families are maybe moving out. And a lot of the people that are moving in are people who are older, more established, more financially secure. And so those people, you know, typically aren't going to be in the workforce or like driving that kind of culture. So in some ways, I, I am nervous about that. It's kind of facilitating this whole, you know, tourism industry. We're here to kind of relax in our golden years. And in the meantime, we have a lot of young people. It's like, what, what's going to happen to them? Are you guys going to stick around? Or are you going to get be patient and kind of see what happens in the next few years in Coeur d'Alene? Or do you guys have an exit plan? Oh, yeah. I think we're, we're here. I mean, uh, it's, it's interesting to wonder what's going to happen to our kids. Because, <clears throat> like I said, we, my family has been around here since, you know, 80, 90 years. And all of our roots and our family and our cousins and this and that are around here. We, it's just, it's really heartbreaking to see family members having to leave because of these kind of financial things, not out of choice. A lot of times back in the day in the nineties, it was funny because all the kids in our high school would think we want to move to California. It was like the cool place, you know? And so everyone would always want to leave. But then the trend was that they would leave and have their adventures and go to college and travel. And then they would always come back and settle down and have their children here. So that's, I think, changing. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But I do think that the, the age situation, like the, the older people, the older population living here versus the younger and what, what is there to offer. So, you know, I think the best bet is to, to hope and pray that, transplants are going to actually be cognizant of what is happening to local people and the real pain on a real level and bring in their jobs and their economy. Um, and then for myself, I'm encouraging my kids to 
you know, look into work that can be done remotely, you know, get a good job. And so where you can stay here in a tourism based city, but you know, yeah. Well, there's people in Idaho that aren't going to like me saying that I think it's my new favorite state. And um, I, I, for a while, Nebraska was my new favorite state. South Carolina was my flavor of the month. And uh, now it's Idaho. I think it's a wonderful place. The people that are super, uh, it's just gorgeous. Um, my kind of people, my kind of place. And uh, you guys got a good thing going. And hopefully you guys can continue that and um, keep it going. Because it's, it's one of the, America's last best great places. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. And we all, our families all moved here and, you know, for a good reason, like it is beautiful. And um, I just hope that, you know, the people coming in can respect, you know, kind of our culture and just kind of assimilate to that and, you know, bring with it their positive, you know, things that they have to offer. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country. And I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.